This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. One of the most powerful ideas in the universe is this, that good will always, ultimately, triumph over evil. It is a law of the cosmos, a principle woven into the very fabric of reality, that good will always, ultimately, triumph over evil. Believe it. Live by that. Practice that. Apply that in your life. And ultimate victory will be yours. For this is the eternal will of the infinite God, a law of life itself, of time and of eternity. It is written in the scriptures, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All creation took place through Him, and none took place without Him. In Him appeared life, and this life was the light of mankind. The light still shines in the darkness, and the darkness has never put it out. And that scripture is profoundly true, for darkness can never extinguish light, nor can evil ever finally vanquish good. For goodness is of God, and in God's will is victory. Love and revere God in thought and word and deed. The spiritual meanings of words and names meant much to the ancient Hebrews, they were symbolic, sacred. Moses meant drawn from the water. Joshua meant whose help is in Jehovah or Savior. Jehovah meant I am or the Eternal One, a name more sacred than any other, for it expressed the character and the power of God. But we are admonished, do not treat God trivially, either in thought or in word. Professor John H. Powell has written of profanity, you will not be struck dead with a thunderbolt. No sudden catastrophe will overtake you, but you will not avoid the inevitable consequences of irreverence. Slowly but inevitably, the high places of your life will be leveled down, and there will be nothing left that is holy or sacred. You cannot take God's name in vain and continue to revere him. Gradually, all ideas of him, all appreciation of his glory and majesty will go, and what should be the finest influence in your life will be gone. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Swear not at all. Jesus was living and teaching among peoples who were profuse in the swearing of their oaths. By the beard of Allah, by the name of the holy prophet, in such words they swore. They swore by their mothers and by their fathers, by all that was holy, by all that was unholy. Wrote Christopher Morley, to many the word God is a formula on Sundays and an oath on weekdays. And Lewis Evans says, the worst thing that can happen is that we have lost all sensitivity to reverence. When I was in Korea, he wrote, I saw lepers with fingers and toes rotted off by this horrible disease, and I said to one of the doctors, their pain must be intense. But he replied, no, there is little pain at this stage. The disease has gone too far, and so when one is no longer sensitive to irreverence, the deadly malady has taken its toll. Live in honor, praise, and worship of God. Hold God's thought and name above all others, for God is the universal father of all. And God is your father, your friend, who cares about your every day, your every moment, every instant of your life. The God who created it all knows you and wants ultimate good for your life. In contemporary life, modern science and advanced industry are increasingly taking care of humanity's physical and material needs. There was a time when virtually all of human energy was consumed by simply producing enough to eat. But now humanity inhabits a world of increasing material plenty. And people are in restlessness beginning to seek for something more than just material plenty. Not mere things, but spiritual truths, values, and experiences. Humanity is about to begin seeking the things of God as never before in all of human history. There is dawning a spiritual renaissance, which one day is going to make more differences in this world than any war which has ever been waged, any battle ever fought, any governmental, political, social, or economic upheaval in all of human history. And you, if you will, may be part of it in seeking and finding and doing the living will of the living God. Horace Traubel, the philosopher, once wrote, What can I do? I can talk out when others are silent. I can say people when others are saying money. I can stay up when others are asleep. I can keep working when others have paused to play. I can give life big meanings 
when others give life little meanings. I can say love when others are saying hate. I can say every person when others say just one person. What can I do? I can give myself to life when others refuse to give themselves to life. Dr. Carl Jung, the Swiss psychiatrist, quoted one of his patients one time as saying, if only I knew that my life had some meaning and some purpose, there would be no more silly talk about my mental problems and my nerves. Frank Horn, the great black track star, once gave the following advice about living and running a race. He said, live as I have taught you. It's a short dash. Dig your starting holes deep and firm. Launch out of them into the straightaway with all the power that is in you. Look straight ahead to the finish. Think only of the goal. Run straight, run high, run hard. Save nothing and finish with an ecstatic burst that carries you hurtling through the tapes to victory. That's how to live. Live life abundantly and fully. Jesus said, I've come that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete, that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus was a person whose watchword was be of good cheer, fear not. The gladness of knowing God shown in Jesus' eyes and on his face and rings in his every word. So may the gladness of knowing God permeate every aspect of your life. For to live as a son or daughter of God as you are is the ultimate joy of human existence. There was an anxious parent one time talking with a friend about children. Maybe the friend suggested you have tried to give your children too much to live with, but not enough to live for. That is the great need, something to live for, some great purpose, some cause. I was talking with a college student one time who said, what did God make such a world as this for anyway? I could make a better world than this myself. And I replied, that is why God put you on this world, to make it a better world than it is. Give God all that you are, your time, your energy, body, mind, spirit, soul, all that you have, all that you are, place before the living God in consecration, in dedication, and say, God, here am I, use me for the transformation of this world, to live as a son or daughter of yours and a brother or sister to every other person of every race, of every color, creed, origin, and nationality. On one occasion, a man was in a sense, teasing the author H.G. Wells, chiding him about being so pessimistic in his book, The Shape of Things to Come, which deals with the future. Pessimistic, said Mr. Wells, indeed not. I was exceedingly optimistic in that book. Why do you assume that man will continue to inhabit the earth? Other animals that did not use their brains became extinct. Why shouldn't we? Asked the author Wells. But even more than the need to use our intellectual resources is the need to use our spiritual resources. The kingdom of God is within. God's spirit indwells the mortal mind to lead, to guide, to instruct, and inspire. If only we will be willing learners of the teaching of the living God. The age of adventure is hardly a bygone era upon this earth. It has only just begun. It was back in the year 1958 that the U.S. atomic submarine, the Nautilus, churned silently along for 1,830 miles beneath the Arctic Ocean ice cap from the Pacific Ocean to the Atlantic. An awesome achievement. Space travel has become a reality. Science is exploring the ocean depths. This is a tremendous time to be alive. But the greatest discoveries of all are going to come in the realms of spiritual exploration as the human species begins to release these higher God-given energies for the benefit of all of humankind. New horizons lie not only before us, but within us, within you, awaiting your discovery of who you really are and what you really are and what your life can be and become, that you have an eternal life and an eternal destiny lying before you. You have a rendezvous with the architect of all of time and space lying before you. This is the great adventure of all of human life, the finding and the knowing of God. It can come for you this moment in childlike faith. On one occasion, some people came to Jesus, bringing little children for him to touch and to bless. 
the disciples attempted to discourage them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. And he said, you must let little children come to me. Never stop them, for the kingdom of God is made of little ones like these. Indeed, I assure you that the person who does not accept the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter it. And then he took the children into his arms and laid his hands on them and blessed them. Jesus is emphasizing the childlike faith of a true son or daughter of God. May that faith prevail in your life as well. There was a certain man in the country, came to San Francisco, went to a famous jewelry store and looked through a glittering assortment of diamonds, emeralds, rubies. But then his eye chanced to rest upon one stone in a velvet case, which seemed to be quite ordinary, lusterless looking. And he said to the clerk, I'm surprised that you have that stone in the display case at all. It's so very plain. There's no real beauty to it. But the attendant reached in and took it out of its case without saying a word. He closed his fingers about it and waited for just a few moments, and then slowly he opened his hand. And what a transformation had taken place. That very same stone, which only a moment before had seemed dull and lusterless, now gleamed and shone with all the iridescent splendors of the rainbow. What have you done to it? asked the astonished customer. And the clerk replied, that, sir, is an opal. And we call it a sympathetic jewel because it only needs to be held in the warmth of the human hand to bring forth its beauty. There is many a man or woman in this world who feels ordinary and commonplace, but in the loving hands of the living God, even the most ordinary human being takes on new beauty and luster in his or her life. You can in your life. The love of God can transform a drab and plain existence into one of divine qualities, goodness and love and joy. Give your life to God. Put your existence into the very hands of the creator of all, who is your father, who with forgiveness and mercy and love will take your life and transform it, and you will begin to live in the faith, the courage, the joy, the strength, the wisdom for which you have so long craved. And it all can begin, if you have not experienced it ever before, it can begin for you this moment by the faith to claim it and live it. And then write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written things on finding God, growing spiritually, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, the brotherhood of man, life after death. All of this, yours free, no cost, charge, or obligation when you write to Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell that address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R. RST, California, C A L I F O R N I A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non sectarian, non profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.